to, um, we're always striving to capture that perfect decisive moment. Um, the other thing I like about being a street photographer is that we are part of a, a community. So um, I know, you know, people in person in Australia and, and around the world that I've met <clears throat> um, other street photographers around the world um, through social media as well. But you meet people on social media and then you meet them in person and you always you already have a connection and street photography is our connection because we have we can understand um that sort of weirdness <laughs> or street photographers can understand each other because we we look for similar things um the other the other important aspect of street photography i think is that it provides it's a little bit like documentary photography in that it provides an historic record. We take um, photos in public um, and it's important for us to continue to do that. Oops, oops, sorry. My keyboard is very sensitive. Okay, so my, my work. So I'm very fortunate to live in a beautiful place just south of Sydney in Australia. Um, just on the coast. So I live um, very close to the beach, which is a, a beautiful place. It's like paradise, but it's not the greatest place for a, for a crazy street photographer because of the lack of people. Um, so, um, so my style has, has been inspired a lot by the Australian environment. Um, in Australia, we have very strong light and and clear blue skies, and the light produces really vivid and strong colours. So for me, um, colour is really important in my work. Um, it's um, I do I I have sort of dabbled in black and white photography, but Hi Julia. Um, uh, hi Julia. Hi yes. Julia. Sorry to. Are you sharing your screen right now? Yes. Uh, could you just do it, close it, and share it again? It seems like to you, but uh, it's not, it's not visible. Okay. Just a minute. Oh, no, no. Uh, so can please. You see, can you see my screen now? Uh, yeah, we see your screen. So you can minimize this window so that we can see your screen. Okay. Yeah, now we see it. Okay, so you can see it? Okay. All right. So, so you can come to the presentation. <laughs> Thank you. So do I need to start from the beginning again? Um, if you don't mind. Just, a couple of, I'll just show the two, slide. Sorry. This was the first slide, Oops. and then Sorry. I talked Thank about street photography. No, we, we were listening to you, but somehow we lost the visuals. So we are good to go awesome. from here. Like audio part was completed. Okay. okay. So sure. um, okay, so that's the the um, I talked about those points why I like street photography and the benefits of street photography. And then um, I just started to talk about my work and that um, my work is influenced a lot by the Australian environment and the light um, has a big impact on my work in that it, um, it produces vivid colour. I also like to capture movement and gestures and emotion and use layering in my work. Um, so in Australia, um, Australia is very quiet in comparison to the other, to other places in the world because our population is very, very small. Um, 
we have only 20 or so million people in the whole country and that means that we have to travel to a lot of other places in the world to get exposure to different environments. And I've been very, very fortunate that I've been able to do, to do that. Um, I've done quite a few workshops which have helped really um, establish my style and I've attended a couple of street photography festivals where I've met other street photographers and making connections um, is, has been really important um, for me in street photography. Um, so, um, so I love to capture colour and movement and using the, the blue sky and, and clean backgrounds. Um, but this, this is what I sort of did in my early work. But um, now I really love to create um, layers and and more and more I'm attracted to images that sort of have more complex layering and where sometimes subjects are overlapping and filling the frame. In Australia um, <clears throat> I often talk about being invisible as a as a middle-aged woman and a small as a small woman it's um it's much easier for me as a street photographer because I can become invisible. People don't, I'm not seen as a threat. People don't um, see me um, as a threat to them. They just don't see me, basically. Um, that's not, not really the case so much in India. Um, so I have to use different, different tactics in, in India. Um, the other, the other, um, the other thing about my style is that I I like to shoot um, really wide and and um, but very close. So I use um, a wide a wide lens. So my favourite focal length is an eighteen millimeter, a twenty eight mil equivalent. I use a Fujifilm cameras. Um, more and more, however, I'm using um, the 24 mil equivalent, so 16 mil. Um, Fuji have just come out with a, or last year they came out with a 16 millimeter lens that I really love. So I've been using that on my XT2. Um, although I did just recently um, buy the Fuji um, X100V. And I, I've got a conversion lens for that um, so I can um, shoot using the 18 millimeter, um, 28 mil equivalent on that. Um, <clears throat> I do occasionally use the 23, but that's really too tight for me now. And I use it, if I'm shooting portraits or a gig, I'll, I'll use the 23 or maybe a 50 mil lens, but that's very rare for me to do that. Um, okay, so I'll just start off with um, some of my earlier work where um, I focused a lot. It's called the, the Blue Series. So I have a couple of series and projects that I'm working on. Um, and <clears throat> these first few images are um, from a from a series called Out of the Blue. So, I, I as I said before, I love movement and colour, and using the deep blue of the Australian sky, so you get that clean figure to ground. So I use so my um, images from the Blue series use that blue, lovely blue Australian sky as the background. I also, um, another thing about my style is that I, I love to um, shoot low and I love to freeze movement using a really fast shutter speed. This is at the, um, the Opera House, Sydney Opera House. And this is, again is one of my earlier images. Another from the Out of the Blue series. C 
Sydney Opera House. These photos were all taken a couple of years ago now. This is um, getting right underneath people. And this, um, I, this is not, so when I process my um, photos, I, I use minimal processing. So these colors are quite true, even though they seem very vivid, they're actually, that is fairly true to the um, actual color. Um, so more, this is a more recent photo and um, I find um, that I'm now sort of getting closer and closer to people and I'm using um, a foreground element in a lot of my photos. <clears throat> um, I really like that effect of getting up close and then getting the, the background layering. This is in Milan a couple of years ago. This, um, I, I quite like chopping heads off. You can, can sometimes create more mystery in your photos if you leave something out of it. And in this case, it was the, the man's eyes and nose. And you just see his teeth. So his teeth <clears throat> say a lot about his character. Um, this is from Japan, this is using flash and getting up very, very close. So I was right underneath this person. This is in London last year at the Hackney Carnival. Again at the Hackney Carnival. And you see again the foreground element. Getting up nice and close. And this, uh, a, a lot of people really like this Im image, and I think it's the it's because of the juxtaposition. So it's very close, and you see the detail of the almost naked dancers on the program, the front of the program, and then behind there are these sort of very conservative looking women coming down behind. So it's that juxtaposition as well as the layering. Um, that is um, part of the appeal of this image. Back at the Hackney Carnival again. I really love getting close to get the get pick up the details. So you can see the detail of her fingernail, her green fingernail. And just her capturing those sort of gestures and those little emotional moments is something also that is um, is good to get, and then and then you can see the woman in the background. So there's even detail there in the background. This is in Japan. Um, I would love to do a series called Twisted Faces. I've got a couple of um, images where of, of twisted faces. So that's that's another project I could do, but it, a series I could do, but it's extremely rare that you would get a twisted face i've got i've got a couple but i'm trying to collect more there's the other twisted face and and this is the start of another um lot of photos where um i'm using the light so in australia a lot of um Australian street photographers are very familiar with exposing for the highlights um, and to use that light to create an interesting photo. So um, it's, it's easy to create an interesting photo um, using the light just with people walking into the light, but it's very hard to create an image that's different. So you'll see a lot of this type of image where people have exposed for the highlights where people are just walking, not doing anything in particular. Um, 
so I try and look for people who are gesturing or interesting looking people rather than just taking photos of people walking towards me. I like this one in particular because um, it reminds me of a Renaissance painting. Um, and this and it it's just it's using it's using the light, but it's also it's more interesting because of the guy in the background, kind of he spotted me and I quite like images where the person has spotted me, but the other you know, from a from another angle or from the background. This is this woman just happened to stride past me in the middle of the Pitt Street Mall and she stopped and stood just in the light and it was just one of those moments which are very, very rare. This is an early, early image um, taken at St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney. A lot of street photographers like to hang out there. Um, I have a friend, Linda McLean. She's got some beautiful images from here. This is Sydney Mardi Gras, again, using the light, but also you can see um, how effective um, a photo becomes when you use a foreground element. It just becomes a little bit this this guy in the shadow on the left hand side, left hand side. Um, you can't really see his face. It makes it a little bit more mysterious, and that foreground element there um, just produces more um, sort of mystery. Using the light again. This is a very old photo. I think it was from about four or five years ago. But I love her little fingernail there. Um, again, using the light, but in this case, um, you know, these women are using their hands. I love, I love capturing hands and movement. And this is also in Sydney. And the shadow looks as though it's floating across the street. So another place that I love to go to in Sydney is an outdoor gym at Bondi, Bondi Beach. Um, other photographers like to, to go there too. And the, the reason we like, like to go there is because, again, um, you have that clear blue sky as the background element and um, the people that um, hang out there don't mind having their photos taken. Um, they're all very beautiful looking people. Um, and the other reason I really love it is that you can produce some really beautiful, beautiful layering. You can practice your layering there and play around with um, perspective and also the shadows are very strong. This um, is another example of the way I like to play around with um, getting that foreground element really close. It just really distorts the perspective. And the viewer um, wonders what is going on here. Again, similar sort of thing. Um, I was I was right up very close to this woman. She was lying on the ground with her legs up, and the women were behind her. And I just sort of hung hung around and worked the scene, and just waited for something interesting to happen. The other thing I, I like to do is try and immerse myself into the scene. So 
um, if you stay in one scene for a little while, um, people get used to you and you can just get closer and closer. And that was the case in um, this situation where I got in very, very close. And again, you can see the detail, her, her little black fingernail and the, the bracelets on, that the women are wearing. And then there's also something interesting going on in the background with the people having a conversation. Um, this is an example of how you can get good layering at this particular location. And this one, again, is a great example. So I've got the, I've got the feet as the foreground element and they're kind of interesting because they're very dirty feet. Um, then there's the, the shadow um, on the ground, which is a very strong shadow and has that triangular shape. And then you've got some mid-ground elements and then background elements. And people, there are lots of things happening in this, in this image, lots of little stories. And this was another situation where I just sort of stayed with that scene um, and worked it. And this, the, the legs were going up and down, up and down, and I just stayed there and waited to capture the man in the background between the legs. And then you've got the story happening on the right-hand side. Okay, so um, I was talking before about um, the need to travel because, yes, we have some great places in Australia to shoot and there's amazing light, but for a person who loves to get up very close to people and fill the frame, it's a little bit hard um, to do in Australia. It's harder to do. And one of our favourite places to, to visit is India and we're trying to get there every year now. We have quite a few friends there and we just, we just love it. Um, so these are a couple of shots from from India this this was a while this was a couple of weeks whoops this was a couple of years ago when I was doing a workshop with Macho Dakowitz um in Kolkata I just love the the colors of the Hindu areas there the little tight laneways this is also in Kolkata Again, getting up nice and close and getting that detail. And, and here's another example of the guy in the background spotting me. Um, this is a, an example of filling the frame and the, the woman in the, in the foreground isn't actually the main subject in this in this image it's the two people to the right in the background they look as though they're about to kiss this is um between uh delhi and agra we stopped um uh at a river and there was a lot of colour happening here. Um, I really loved the green gloves. Everyone was wearing the green, green washing gloves and they had a lot of colourful laundry piled up. Um, so I, I like this image because of the connection with the green gloves and that was the intention when I, when I was taking the photo. Okay, this is in Varanasi. This was taken just last year in November or uh, December. Um, this is an example of um, where I like to really get down low because I think you can get quite a diff different perspective when you get right down low. 
So um, I um, I can do this now, but as I get older, um, I think I will find it a lot harder. This is in Varanasi as well. Um, and this, I was trying to uh, fill the frame here with as many faces as I could. This was using the 16 mil um, Fuji lens. This is an old one. This is also from um, Varanasi. I just love the, um, the humor in this image. I love I love to capture humor. I'm not actually that that good at it, but I try I try hard. There are a, a lot of other people that are really good at capturing humor. Here's another attempt. This is in Jodhpur last year. This is in um, Jaisalmer in December. The weather. Um, there, well, as you as you know, it doesn't rain much there, um, and because it's a long way from anywhere, the the skies are very very blue, and I had a lot of fun out there, um, just working with the beautiful light. This is in Jaisalmer again. Um, the buildings are quite low, so you can get um, close to the kids flying their kites on the roof rooftops. Um, again, I, I'm playing with perspective in this image, so trying to get something weird happening in the foreground so that the viewer um, questions what is happening. This is also in Jaisalmer at the markets. The, um, there are some small markets there where a lot of the um, desert people come in and the, the women are, are dressed in really heavy garments. They're very colourful and they're wearing very, very heavy jewellery. This is in Kolkata at the pet market, one of my favourite places to shoot. I particularly like the chicken section. This was taken last year, um, and as and this um, is another example of just staying with the scene and working the scene. Um, and I was trying to get as many heads and faces in there as possible. I would have liked um, to have had the middle chicken facing the right way and I would have liked to have had another chicken in in there in the in the space up the back but it wasn't to be but this works pretty well um this is also in Kolkata I think in 2018 same I love the the movement and the gestures in this image and the the hand the holding of the hands and um, this is just a weird photo. This is in Pushkar in two thousand and eighteen. The same. Okay, so now I'll talk a little bit about my um, main project, which is um, called the Pool Project, and it's been ongoing for almost um, four years now. Um, so the reason I have this project is because it's just down, it's literally one minute drive down the road or 15 minutes walk down the hill. This is my local beach and there's a beautiful pool down there. And um, 
it's it's a beautiful setting and it's a it's a very spe special place to me and it's a special place to the community my favorite time to shoot is in the the summer months when it's very hot and particularly um just after Christmas and, and in the new year, a lot of people come there from Sydney um, and you get a lot of cultural diversity. So there's a real mix of people who come there. Um, I like this photo because it really expresses the joy that people find in the place. This also is an example of how I like to play around with perspective. This is the place. So this is in the middle of, um, in the middle of winter probably, or no, it's probably in April when um, there aren't a lot of people there, but you can see what it is like. There are two pools and there's a central concrete um, area. So even though it looks like a, a boring, uninteresting place, it actually has a lot of little places that I like to hang out. So that's, that's me working the scene right on the edge of the pool. I like to go down there late in the afternoon when the light is really lovely on a clear day. This is a photo that I took back in 2016, early 2016. And this is the first photo really that, um, that got me going on the pool project. Um, I was using, I wasn't using a Fuji then, I was using an Olympus camera and um, I just really like this photo because, again, it's, um, it has great layering but there's something really organic and she's just come out of the pool and she's dripping wet and there's a lot of flesh and skin and then there's that kid looking back at me and there's a man in the background just staring out to sea. It sort of um, really resembles what, what this place is about, signifies rather. Um, again, this is an early photo, but it just shows you a little bit about the, it, um, the cultural, cultural diversity at the place. You get um, lots of different cultures. Um, this is an early photo again and um, quite a few of these kids are locals and they've changed quite a bit since this photo was taken. Um, but I re this is a great example of how, how, it's, how you can get some nice layering down there on that central part. Again, an early image. In the middle of winter, this one was taken. The kids love to hang out on the end there. Um, unfortunately, they've since built um, a fence across the back, so it's not quite as exciting as it used to be. Um, I love this one because of the red, in Australia we call these red thongs um, and he, this guy just left his thongs there and, and jumped into the pool. This, um, this is at the pool too but it's not, it, it's not typical of my pool images but this is a more recent one. 
again, I, I'm just getting closer and trying to get more detail. Um, this guy is, is I see him um, every now and then at the pool. And I love this tattoo. This is another one of those images where I'm playing around with the perspective. And I love this photo because there's a lot of action and it also conveys a sense of, of the joy and excitement that the kids have when they're when they're at the pool and this is so when I'm um, shooting at the pool I just stay often just stay in one place um, and the other night when I was talking to Shweta um, on hardcore street photography I was talking about how um, or someone asked a question about whether I, I like to fish, um, as in fish in street photography, and this is a this is a great example of fishing, um, where I just stay in one place and just um, wait patiently for something to happen, and the kids, um, I, I just kind of pretend that I'm taking a photo of the reflections or the seaweed or the creatures that are there and the kids get used to me being there and they just, I become part of the scene. The similar, this is, this is the same sort of thing. Um, also, I, I, I really love taking photos up close of the, um, the kids' toys at the pool. Someone's hat. So there's this wall at the end of the pool and I like to just sort of crouch, crouch down low and get that nice clean background but you also get some kind of um, weird things happening like this and like this. And then you get some quiet moments during the winter. This is actually not in the winter. <laughs> this is in the summer. But I like this one because it's kind of obscure and you wondering what what is happening here and some more fun fun photos And this, this is a more recent photo I took. Um, there's a Barbie doll in the foreground and the, um, the mum of the, of the kid who owns the Barbie doll said that that Barbie doll had been everywhere. So anyway, I, um, this is another example of, of just loving to, I, I just love to, um, get these sort of things in as foreground elements in my shots. I really love the colours here as well, how Barbie's um, shoes match the, the um, surfboard. And some movement, more movement, action shots. I like the, the triangle in this image. 
and I love I love the colors the connection of the pinks the three pinks and I was talking about that wall at the front of the pool before in the late afternoon you get some really strong shadows in the, in the um, summer in the long summer afternoons and I just love hanging there and just waiting for people to walk past and this um, this photo um, is one where this is a perfect example of fishing so I was sitting literally at um, the the feet just really close to these women um, so you can't really see me in there but you can see the the shadows of them and they were having a conversation and waving their hands around everywhere and I just sort of waited I've got quite a quite a lot of shots of this particular scene and so I just waited for that little moment to come and it just happened when this this guy was pointing Um, so I was talking about quiet moments before and more and more I'm enjoying capturing some quieter moments there. And this one. This is a fairly recent one. And then um, I love this image. Um, it's a great example of just capturing that that decisive moment so I was just waiting I could see her coming and I was just sitting on the edge of the pool and she just happened to look up at me just at that right moment and the couple in the background are just they were they were they were there for quite a while that they, they were there for a good half hour or so um but if you just you just hang and you just wait and you you look at what's happening around you and you can yeah this is a this is a great moment because she happens to be looking up at me but all the little pieces in the puzzle can fall into place if you just wait so mukesh how are we going for time Mukesh? We have, uh, we are at 450 IST. Okay. So we have, so 40 do, I have do I have some time to talk about women in street photography? Yes, please do that. And I have some questions, follow up questions as well regarding the women uh, street photographers. Please carry on. Okay. Right. Okay. I will. Okay. So we do have some time to talk about women in street photography. Um, so this is something that I'm, um, I've am i been really passionate about for the last couple of years. Um, and um, this time two years ago, I, I, I talked about um, how women um, were, um, were not very well represented in street photography but now fortunately I can talk about the rise of women in street photography so it's just happening exponentially um, collectives are now increasing their numbers of women um, and women are um, increasingly included on judging panels at festivals and and speaking at um, at festivals and there's a greater, repre greater representation of women amongst finalists in competitions now. So the reason this has happened is um, because of the formation of groups such as Women in Street, um, Women Street Photographers and the Unexposed Collective as, as well. There are a var variety of other um, groups as well. And... Um, and plus the role of social media 
which has allowed these, these groups to form. So I'd just like to show you some examples of some work of women street photographers now. And you can see the, the quality of it. Um, oops, sorry, racing through. Um, so this is Melissa Breyer. She's a New York um, based street photographer who produces really beautiful work, predominantly black and white. Um, Elisa Tomaselli, one of my um, all time favorite street photography photographers who sadly passed away um, early this year. Um, she, her work was just um, incredible in that she was, she had the ability, she, she had this project called Collecting Souls and, and that's exactly what she did. She just went around capturing souls and if you look at her work, um, that's what you see. It's another one of hers. I was very fortunate to meet Elisa in 2018 and we were quite good friends. This is Maria Capitou from Greece. I love this image because it's very full and there are lots of stories. And the layering is amazing. Michelle Rick, New York Street photographer. Um, this is a fantastic photo because it has um, the composition is just brilliant. It has lovely layering, light, and and look at all those stories in this image. Another one of Michelle's using the light beautifully and with reflections and faces. Graciela Magnoni. Nicola Miles, she's a UK based street photographer. Julie Rodova, I think most street photographers now are very familiar with Julie's work. She, um, she runs the Street Repeat platform, which is a very um, popular uh, Instagram feed. Another one of Julie's, she, I love her images because they're so obscure. You just, you have to look a couple of times to work out what's going on. Andrea Ture, again, this is fantastic composition and use of light. Joanna Mroka from Poland. It's a very, she does, um, it's more documentary style work, but her images are very full and rich. Ona Neo from Tel Aviv, Israel. Oops. This is uh, this is Anya Klosik from Poland. Um, I, I just adore Anya's work. It says so much about her. Her personality really shines through in her work. And this is a classic Anya photo. And this also says a lot about Anya as a person. She just, she has a massive camera and she gets right up very close to people. And this is a brilliant photo. There's so, so much happening here. This is a self portrait. Banal Burke, she's from Turkey. 
there are a lot of really brilliant Turkish um, street photographers, um, and a lot of them are female. Fabrizia Ascatigno, again, um, she's from Italy, and the work of Italian street photographers is just, as you um, all know, is just brilliant. And again, a lot of them are women. Becky Francis um, from London. She, um, she does work that is really sort of quintessentially London. It speaks of the place. This is Seda Tokos, Toxos. She's also um, from Turkey. Rosa Wolf. Um, she's uh, she lives in Rome. Alicia Kim from the Ukraine. Brilliant use of light here and color. Nayeli Cruz from Mexico. Nikki Glaudi, um, she's from Miami. And I love Nikki's work. Um, she's a real inspiration to me. She just, she loves sort of getting up close to people as well. Valeria Toffinelli from Rome. Um, she uses light in an amazing way. Um, her more recent work is has just um, just blowing me out of the water. It's just amazing. You have to check that out. Danielle Horton, who's from Ireland and part of the Observe Collective. Michelle Groskopf, who's from LA, and she's... Um, uh, she's an amazing um, flash photographer. Sonia Madrigal from Mexico. Pupe, who's a Thai, oh, she's originally from Thai, Thailand, but she um, lives in New York at the moment. And I just did an interview with Pupe um, for the Little Box Collective. And she um, she has a lot of humour in her work, which I really love. And this is a perfect example. Sarah Nkmidi, also um, a member of Observe Collective. I um, love this photo. It's fantastic. And some Indian um, women street photographers, Debrani Das from Kolkata. Another one of Debrani's um, images. Pinky Sanyal, sorry, I've, I've spelt her name incorrectly. She's She also produces brilliant work. Jayati Saha, I love this image. And then we have um, some amazing street photographers in Australia as well. And here's um, here are a couple of Australian street photographers: Amal Sofia Tofeli from Melbourne. Martine Lancer, well, she is now living in Holland, but she was living in Australia for many years. Angela Barrow from Melbourne. Rebecca Wiltshire, who's a very good friend of mine. She's also the co-founder of the Unexposed Collective. We run that together. Kim Boyd, a Melbourne-based photographer who has a great project um, just photographing mostly train windows and the, the images are beautiful. She uses the light and shadows really well. Um, Renata Filippi, 
this is um, a great photo, but it's not actually very typical of Renata's work, um, the type of work she's doing now. Rosie English, she's from Sydney. She does a lot of um, photography at Bondi Beach, around Bondi Beach in the eastern suburbs. So um, a lot of women street photographers from Australia um, work do work um, at the beaches. And one of the reasons we're able to do that is because we are women. We have access to the beach. It's much easier for us to take photos at the beach um, than it is for, for men. Men um, are not as as trust seen as um, trusted to be trusted as women are. It's okay for women to take photos of, of kids, whereas it's much harder for men here to take photos of kids. Uh, Ushi Grant from Melbourne. Rachel Willis, another photographer who does a lot of underwater photography in Sydney. Linda McLean, I was talking about Linda before. Um, this is at St Mary's Cathedral and this, um, Linda's won quite a few competitions with this photo and you can understand why. It's just brilliant. Okay. Okay, Mukesh, I think that's it. Um, that's that's my presentation is finished. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And we do have some questions. Excellent. And let me let me start with the women street photographers. So I have two sure. questions. Um, yes. As a women photographer, in fact, you have answered it already. Right. Um, uh, how um, can you mute yourself? Um, sorry? Uh, no, 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 I'm going, going through. So one of the questions which we have, as a women photographer, what yes. are the advantages? In fact, part of that you have already answered. So what are the yes. advantages and disadvantages uh, you may have? So the advantage I have um, as a woman, as I said, um, people trust women, I think, more than, than men. So particularly here, it's a, more of an advantage to be a woman um, because we aren't seen as a threat. Um, it's, it's easier for us to take photos of children. Um, it's easier for us to take photos of women. But for men, it's much harder that they're... they're um, you know, people are much more suspicious of men taking photos of children or women in particular. Um, I think the situation is is a little bit different in India, for example. So um, I think it's, you know, there are cultural factors there, um, class and cultural factors in India. So for me... Um, it's it's easy for me to take photos um, of anything or anybody in India. Um, point. Um, but um, there are also disadvantages of when I'm in India taking photos because everybody looks at me straight away because I'm different. So I have to use different techniques. I have to pretend that I'm not looking at the person that I'm taking the photo of. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. The other the other advantage I have, as I said before, is that I'm an older, I'm a middle-aged woman, and here, um, no one looks at me, no one pays attention to me at all, so I can get away with taking photos of people pretty closely. Of course. Um, next question is like how to become a professional street photographer? And is it like what all the different some tips and tricks those who are looking to make their career in professional photography? Everybody asks this question, Mukesh. How can I, how can I, 
I make money being a street photographer. Um, the answer is that it's very difficult to make money as a street photographer. You really need to be another type of photographer as well. Um, you know, a wedding photographer or a, com a product photographer. Um, so uh, unless you're extremely an extremely talented um, photographer and an a very good teacher, um, it's it's not really possible. I mean, if you if you do, um, if you're someone like Manit Vohra, for example, who is an extremely talented photographer and a very good teacher, then you can make money. Or Maciej Dakwitz, um, or Ernesto Bazan, or. Nikos Economopoulos, you know, those sorts of people who have an established career in teaching. And even even for them, it's extremely difficult. Um, thank you. Uh, Julia, we have another question. Uh, uh -huh. People would like, want to know that what's your workflow you have, you follow, like, right from conceptualization to final delivery? Um, well, as a street photographer, I can just go out any time and, and shoot whatever I like, basically, unless I'm working on a particular project. But let's say I'm, um, you know, it's a typical summer's day, the weather is perfect, and I, I'm going down to the pool to shoot some photos down there. So I'll spend um, a couple of hours down there probably and then I'll come back and I'll import my photos and I'll go through them and I'll star them. Um, so, sorry, I will key them, the ones that I really like, and then I'll come back to those. And the ones I like out of those I'll process them and my processing basically um, consists of I, I'm very I think I was, I've I say this all the time I'm a very I'm very lazy I don't like to spend a lot of time on a particular image so on any I don't like to dwell on an image and over process it I like my images to just look as though they're straight out of the camera, basically. Um, so minimal processing. So I will um, crop, um, straighten, to make sure the horizon line, for example, is straight. And I'll crop um, slightly to make sure the image is clean on the sides if there's a, you know, little tiny... Um, finger or something sticking into the frame that I don't want, I'll cut that out. Just so the edges of the frame look look clean. Um, and I always use the same color profile for my images, so um, the standard Provia, um, standard Provia color profile, Fuji one. Um, I sometimes I do process my images and, and convert them to black and white. Um, I've been doing that a little bit lately. I think a lot of us have. Um, it's a very black and white time, I think. So, you know, I've been playing around with, with that a little bit. Um, the other thing that I've been playing around with is, is film, more film. So I have a, a panoramic film camera um, and just experimenting with that a little bit. So that, of course, is minimal processing and it takes time to process and to wait. Uh, thank you. Uh, one of the most common questions which we are getting is about the model release, about the permission, about your experience dealing with people or have you ever been in 
some kind of uh, situation where some people objected after the photo. Like, you know, what's your overall view about street photography? Because when you are on a, what I understand when you are on a public property, you are free to take any picture and you don't need a model release. So what's your, what's your take on that? Maybe if you could give some, uh, give your answer considering India, most of our audience are. Okay. So it depends on which country you're um, shooting in, taking your photos in. So in Australia, and I understand in India as well, it's perfectly legal to take photos of people in a public place. Um, it's not the case in places like Germany and France. There, there are different laws there where you have to get a person's permission. But here um, in Australia, it's perfectly legal to take a photo of a person in a public place. That said, um, some people um, don't you don't want you to take their photos. Obviously, they see it as being an you know um, an infringement on their privacy. So, um, if I have had situations where people have asked me to delete photos. Um, and I just do that because I don't want to upset people. Um, there was a situation in the Pitt Street Mall probably about two years ago now where I was taking photos. Um, there was a father with his kids and he thought that I'd taken a photo of his kid. Um, in fact, I hadn't. But... Um, and I said that I hadn't taken a photo of his child and he said um, that it's illegal to take photos in a public place. And I said, no, it's not illegal to take photos in a public place. And he got very upset with me and um, threatened to call the police. And I said, well, call the police and you will then understand that it's not illegal to take photos in a public place. So there are people who don't understand that and you have to explain yourself. Okay. Uh, thank you, Julia. Um, I have uh, one more question. This is about following certain rules, like rules of third, uh, rule of third, or leading lines. So mm -hmm. do you, while taking the pictures, like you've been taking pictures for many years now. So yes. has it become your habit that you, without even thinking, uh, you end up following certain rules, or how is what is your thought process while taking those pictures? Do you like uh, if you could elaborate on that? And how important these rules are in street photography? Because a lot of things are not in your control, like they happen momentarily, you're taking live pho photos, lighting you cannot control. So, what's your take on that? Um, well, first of all, you can control lighting um you so with lighting i always um make sure i've got the light behind the sun behind me so the sun is on the light is on the subject um in terms of um composition that is i i, I was um i'm a designer um so i you know studied aspects of design a long time ago and so it's kind of instinctive for me but I've also learnt a lot from workshops that I've done street photography workshops I've learnt um, the, um, the rules about composition what makes a good street photo so I have all of that in my head and because I've been doing it for quite a long time now it has become instinctive and that's why for anyone who is new to street photography, it's important for you to learn as much as you can from others and get out there and shoot as much as you can so that it does become instinctive. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we still have 15 more minutes. Um, yes. One of the questions... Like who is you are inspiration to uh, many photographers? Who you follow? 
who you follow, um, whose work you inspire, any particular photographers you would like to mention. And you have already given a couple of the names during your presentation, like some of the women street photographers. So can you give, you know, like your photographers, like you follow most? Oh, I mean, I there are some um, contemporary photographers that whose work um, I really love. Um, who, who have inspired me over the years. Um, but there are always new people sort of popping up um, who um, this work I see and go, oh, wow, how did, that, how did they do that? So there are always new people coming, coming through. Um, so I, I learnt I my basics from Maciej Dakowitz, who's a Polish photographer who does a lot of street photography workshops and his workshops, um, he has, um, he only has five people on his workshops and he goes all around the world and he is with his students all the time and he has a lot of repeat students. Um, and, you know, we all, we've all learned a lot from, from him. Um, then there's Vineet, you know, I've done workshops with Vineet. I've run workshops with Vineet um, and I really admire his work um, and he's a compositional master. Um, and then there are other people like um, Ernesto Bazan who, you know, I would love, he's more of a documentary photographer, but I would love to do a workshop of his. Um, I can't afford to do. A workshop of his but I can look at his work I can I've got um, uh, one of his one of his books one of his books of panoramas that I just love looking through um, I'm sort of a bit hooked on panoramas at, at the moment and I have a, a film panoramic camera and so there's another photographer called um, Jens Olof I can't remember his last name. Um, he he does he works with um, panoramas. So I've been looking. We've got one of his books, and I love looking at his work. Um, oh, um, oh, sorry, Jens Olaf Lass Lass Theme. <laughs> Jerry's Jerry's just told me. <laughs> As I said, um, Mukesh, my brain does not function after about 8.30. So oh, I'm doing right. amazing. I cannot remember people's names late at night. So, But I can right. give you a list of names that you can let people know about if that helps. Yes, definitely we'll share it uh, among the people. And uh, yep. yes, we will not take much of your time, I guess, Second last question, like we have two more questions. So by the way, sure. one of the name, one of the names Julia had referred is Vineet Vora. So mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Julia had done a couple of workshops with him. And mm -hmm. we happened to have her in one of our event during the Pushkar 2018. That's the first time we had a privilege to meet Julia. And she had mm -hmm. been our editor guest editor for our monthly magazine uh really yes. appreciate that and uh, we had done some work with the collective she's working so a lot of activities on and off we had been doing and we are hoping to host her uh this year uh into 20, 2020 hope everything goes well because of this lockdown and yes we cross yeah. our in, in November, during the Pushkar 2020, we we are hoping to host uh, her again. Mm -hmm. um, now, second last question is some ethics about street photography, what to do, not to do. And uh, the laws are very, you know, like in India, not very clear. Some developed countries, the laws are clear that you can shoot anything and everything 
from public property, even using the zoom lenses. India, these mm -hmm. are not very common. So keeping apart from the laws, uh, law of the land, what is your take on different ethics? How, what you suggest to the new or old, like the other street photographers? Okay, well, I don't take photos of homeless people. That's just a thing that I don't do. I don't um, take photos of vulnerable people in the street. Um, that to me is a, you know, it's an ethical thing. We, we don't take people, uh, photos of vulnerable people. Um, because where most of us in, are in privileged um, positions. So we have to um, be respectful of, of all people. Um, I think also you don't want to take photos of people in compromised situations. Um, I mean, the street photography community is such now that they will tell you if you post a photo online of someone in a compromising situation, um, they will tell you that that photo is not um, a good photo to post. So the street photography community, um, you know, we're, we're all generally ethical people um, and it's the community that that will say if something is not right. And you, you will learn very quickly. Okay. Does that uh, answer the question? Uh, yes, yes, it does. And interestingly, I have seen, particularly in India, that's where most of street photographers start taking the pictures mm -hmm. of some sadhus and uh, beggars and, you know. Yeah. And, when I and started, I yeah, sorry. They're easy targets. You know, they're, they're easy to take photos of, of those people. But it's just ethically we're in the more powerful position and it's just, it's not, it's not right. Okay. And my last question is, what are the tips you want to give to uh, photographers? Uh, for taking the good street uh, photos and mm -hmm. considering like uh, giving more in depth, sharing your experience, how to get familiarized with the subject. The way you have mentioned about your pool story, like people know you, they, they know that you are one of them. So yeah. when we are going to the streets, we go there for a few minutes or if not a few minutes, not more than an hour. So with that given time, what do you suggest that how to do the best in terms of memorizing with them and, you know, like taking the best out of that, uh, those thoughts? Okay. So when I, when I take um, shots, I, I take candid shots. So I don't um, take shots of people smiling at me. Um, they're candid shots. So I put myself in a situation where, as I said before, I, I like to become invisible so that people don't pay attention to me. Um, at the pool, some people know me there, but still, um, and they know, they know that I take photos down there and they're so used to me being there that they just kind of ignore me now. Um, if, you're, if you're going to the market and you're, or, you know, some other place to go shooting. Um, you become, if you go back repeatedly to those places, you become very familiar with them. Um, people become more familiar with you being there. And so they kind of know what you're doing and they start to ignore you. So if you're new to street photography, just keep going back to the same places, get familiar with those places let people get familiar with you and um, but but don't engage with people when you're taking their photos take their photos and then engage with them after because you want those photos to be candid you don't want them to know 
that they're taking photos of you because once they know that you're taking photos of them, they'll behave in a different way. They'll be, start posing. They won't be relaxed. They won't be doing um, their usual thing that they, that they do. They'll be conscious of you taking photos so you won't get your best photos. Um, the, the thing I always tell um, new street photographers is to go out and shoot as much as you can so that you gain confidence because once you gain confidence, you're able to get closer to people and be more relaxed. And once, you, once you're more relaxed, um, people don't sense your fear. So new photographers, new street photographers, street photographers are always quite fearful um, and people can sense that fear. So you just have to become um, more confident. And you can only become more confident by shooting more and more and getting comfortable with that. Um, and what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, oh, learn from your friends as well. So, you know, go shooting with your friends because that's a good way to, to feel more comfortable and more confident is if you've got... Um, your friends close by, but don't don't go shooting it as a group of people. Split split up and shoot, shoot separately. But you can always sort of check back in with your friends and see how they they're going. Um, so that sort of sense of community and camaraderie is very important in street photography. Uh, um, great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I think it's a well inside. Um, I so what kind of work we can expect from you in next coming time? Like, what's the project which you are working on? What we uh, like can look forward to see any particular work which you are in liberty of discussing, sharing that what we can expect? Oh, um, well, it's a bit difficult at the moment because we can't get out and shoot much so, um. I, as I said, I've, I've got this panoramic camera and I'm trying to um, use that more and more. So I have posted a couple of those photos on my website. Um, you can have a look at those. But they're very, they're, I'm still learning. Um, so I'm hoping to, to take more of those, especially down at the pool and, and, and produce a, a series of those photos. Um, I'd, I'd also like to get back to India and spend sort of a longer amount of time in one place and get more familiar with a particular place. I don't know where that is just yet, but, um, yeah, I just need to do a bit more investigation and just focus more on um, learning more about a particular place um, and, and learning the language might help as well but <laughs> thanks <for that. laughs> okay. um, thanks Julia thank you very much for your time I know it's time for you to sleep it's time for bed uh, now <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate your time looking forward to host you uh, end of 2020. Hope everything goes well. And for everyone, guys, um, please uh, do donate to uh, the Relief Fund. We have a link on our website also. You can donate directly to Prime Minister Relief Fund. And uh, such kind of, uh, like, we, we really appreciate uh, Julia for your time. And on behalf of my team and participants, thank you very much. And looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing you as well as host you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mikesh. It was my, my pleasure and my honor. Okay. Okay, okay guys, we are signing okay. up now. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. Bye, bye Julia. Bye. So, guys, you will receive a recording of this session so if you have missed any part please 
uh, you can go through that and rest of the things you will see in the email thank you guys thank you very much take care bye julia Anyone has any question you can ask me julia is not there but you can ask if you have any general question if you can raise your hand i can unmute you i have unmuted rebecca and vignesh you can ask if you have any question all uh, right now the webinar is over those who don't have any question they can leave if you have any question you can raise your hand and you can ask now Uh, as long as certificates are concerned, we'll share you a link to claim those. You need to provide your details so that certificate can be sent to you within 48 hours. It allow us 48 hours. We will continue to have these sessions. Tomorrow we have a session with uh, Nithil Dennis. Uh, he would be talking about travel photography. Okay, we have El Muhammad. Like you are unmuted, please go ahead. You can ask your question, and Jinsu Anil as well. Please ask your question. We we'll try to answer if it is related to any generic question. Uh, will you be sharing my email, or that be in the video link? Uh, what is that? Like the video? She mentioned that she will give us the name 